Welcome to a new session. Today we are going to study another use of dimensional analysis that is deducing relation among the physical quantities. That is you can derive an equation by using dimensional analysis if you know the dependence of the physical quantity on other quantities and consider it as a product type of the dependence. We will explain more about this in later of this section. First we are going to understand how to derive or deduce a relation among the physical quantities. For that we are going to consider a simple case here that is now we are going to derive an expression for time period of a simple pendulum. We know about a simple pendulum. A simple pendulum consists of a bow and a string. Let the mass of the bow is m and length of the string is L. So we are assuming the time period of a simple pendulum depends on mass of bob m, length of string L. Also we know acceleration due to gravity towards downward which is G. So another factor that can affect time period of a simple pendulum is acceleration due to gravity. That is G. So we consider there may be three factors which can affect the time period of a simple pendulum. So we write time period of a simple pendulum is proportional to length with a power a, m with a power b and g with a power c. Or we can write t is equal to a constant into l raised to a, m raised to b and g raised to c. So we expressed time period of a simple pendulum in product type. That is t is equal to k into l raised to a, m raised to b and g raised to c. Now we are going to find the dimensions of each side that is LHS and RHS. We know it must be same. We know dimensional formula of LHS is dimensional formula of T and that is equal to capital T. What is the dimensional formula of RHS? It is the dimensional formula of L raised to A, M raised to B, G raised to C into K where K is a constant. So we are going to write the dimensional formula. We know a constant is not having any dimensions. So we need to find the dimensions of rest of the quantities to find the dimensional formula. Now dimensional formula of L is capital L and raised to A. Dimensional formula of M is capital M raised to B and dimensional formula of G is L T raised to minus 2 because G is acceleration due to gravity. So it is acceleration. We know acceleration is equal to velocity divided by time and that is equal to length into time raised to minus 2. 
So the dimensional formula of acceleration is L t raised to minus 2. Therefore, dimensional formula of acceleration due to gravity is also L t raised to minus 2. But you have to remember it is having a power of c. So we are putting like this. Simplifying this equation you can write L raised to a into m raised to b into L raised to c t raised to minus 2c. Again we can simplify it L raised to a into L raised to c is L raised to a plus c m raised to b and t raised to minus 2c. So we got dimensional formula of LHS and RHS. So we are equating it that is dimensional formula of T must be equal to dimensional formula of L raised to A plus C M raised to B T raised to minus 2C. We know the dimensions of both sides must be identical. The dimensions on left hand side for L is 0 and also for M is 0. But T is having a dimension of 1. But in right hand side you can see dimension of L is A plus C, dimension of M is B and dimension of T is minus 2c. Therefore, you can equate the dimensions since the dimensions on both sides must be equal. So, you can get the equations as a plus c is equal to 0, b is equal to 0 and minus 2c is equal to 1. By using these three equations, you can get the values of A, B and C. You know, from this equation, you can write C is equal to minus 1 by 2. Substituting in the first equation, you can get A plus minus 1 by 2 is equal to 0 or A is equal to 1 by 2. We already got B is equal to 0. So, we got the values of A, B and C. We know we start with an assumption that is time period is equal to K into L raised to A, M raised to B and G raised to C. We got the values of A, B and C here. Substituting the values here, we will get time period of a symbol pendulum is t is equal to k into l raised to a a is 1 by 2 m raised to b b is 0 and g raised to c c is minus 1 by 2 so this equation is k into square root of l by g so we got Time period of a symbol pendulum is t is equal to k into square root of l by g. By other methods or experiments, you can find the value of k is equal to 2 pi. So, time period of a symbol pendulum is 2 pi into square root of l by g. So, here we derive an equation for time period of a simple pendulum. So, in this way you can deduce a relation among the physical quantities or derive an equation by using dimensional analysis. But this is having some limitations and we are going to discuss that limitations of this method. First limitation is that we have to know the quantities on which a particular physical quantity 
depends. So, we have to know the quantities. Let us rewind what we have done in the previous example. In that, first we start with T is proportional to L raised to A, M raised to B, G raised to C. Here, we got L, M and G are the quantities which affects time period of a simple pendulum. So, if we do not know this, then we cannot do this derivation. So, to do this, we have to know the quantities on which this particular physical quantity depends. Also, we discussed in the beginning that it is possible only if the dependencies of product type. What it means? It simply means that you cannot derive an equation like S is equal to ut plus half a t square by this method because it is a sum of two terms. So, you cannot derive this equation by using dimensional analysis. You can derive an equation like t is equal to 2 pi into square root of L by G or you can derive an equation for centripetal force F is equal to mv square by r because it is of product type. So, you can derive this equation, but you cannot derive this equation as it is the sum of two terms. Second limitation is that you cannot deduce numerical constants having no dimensions. You can see it here. The value of k is 2 pi that we can only deduce by other methods. We cannot deduce the value of k by dimensional analysis. So, you cannot deduce numerical constants having no dimensions by using dimensional analysis. Third limitation is that it works if you have as many equation as unknowns. So, these are the limitations of this method of deducing a relation among the physical quantities. So, we studied how to derive or deduce relation among the physical quantities using dimensional analysis. Thank you for watching this video. Keep learning. If you are not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe it. Also, please like and share this video.